All right. Well, as we can see here, our build has completed successfully. Uh, I will mention, you'll have to forgive me, uh, I've been sick the past couple days, so my voice may sound a little strange as my throat is pretty uh, pretty sore from uh, from being sick. So I do apologize for that. But here we can see the build has completed successfully for uh, the... Uh, discovery that we've been working on uh, using the uh, Sony Open Device project. And so I did a video for AOSP 10 on how to flash those images, but I want to go through uh, what uh, we should be doing per the instructions because uh, there is going to be an extra step in here that you do for the Sony Open Device projects that you usually don't do for other devices. Um, I will note that it took 3 hours and 38 minutes on my machine uh, here. Um, I do have a pretty good machine but I am using a uh, RAID array which is actually networked so it's kind of slow to uh, perform the build because it has to move that data back and forth over the network which takes a little bit of a uh, little bit of time so uh, but you could expect you know something around the three hour mark for your build typically with a with a fairly decent machine obviously you get a better machine you can do this even faster so we'll take a look at uh, at the instructions again so of course we uh, we launched we chose our device we said make and then you know it built and now it's completed we'll look at the next step here so uh... you know of course it tells you that you need to unlock your bootloader lo um, prior to doing this step which of course for my phone the bootloader has been unlocked for a long time uh... but they do have <clears throat> Excuse me. They do have for the Sony Open Device Project uh, a very easy uh, service that you can use um, with very clear instructions on how to do that. You can follow this link if that's something you need to uh, to check out. So it says, go ahead and connect your device and put the to your computer in fast boot mode. Uh, it usually says it tells you to turn off your phone and then press volume up <clears throat> and then insert the USB cable. And while holding volume up, you'll see that the LED on the device will turn blue, and this tells you that uh, you're in fast boot mode, which I've done now, and it's hooked up to that computer. So then, on your computer, fa uh, flash the boot recovery system user data images by entering the following commands in a terminal window. And so then it gives you these uh, commands right here, uh, which is which is good. Um, there's a couple notes here. It's not necessary to reflash user data every time you flash your device, but sometimes the new software is incompatible with previous content, which might result in a device that doesn't boot. If you're, you experience this, try to reflash only the user data again. Note, recovery image or vendor images may be missing depending on device layout. Okay, so this does make a difference. Um, for which phone you're building for. The phone that I'm building for does not have a separate recovery image. So the recovery image is part of the boot image. So for the phone that I'm building for, we only need boot, system, vendor, user data, right? Um, but there's also another uh, thing that we need, um, which I think is going to get to in the next step. We'll go ahead and perform this step. And then the next step will be flashing the vendor image to your device. And you're like, well, we already flashed a vendor image. Well, this actually means the OEM image because there's an OEM partition. So that's why it's a little bit different. And so I wanted to make sure that you saw that when we went through these instructions. So minimize that real quick. I need to get a faster internet connection. But uh, so here we are. We're, we're back at the uh, C root or the uh, the the start of the build directory, and uh, we can take a look in here in our out folder. We see out. We see target. We see product. We see discovery. Then in here we have boot and we have um, system image, user data image, and vendor image. And so all of them are there. 
So we can start flashing them. So in the instructions it said you could just say fast boot flash and then so for instance if we're going to do boot first we do boot and we go to the out uh, target product discovery boot oops boot dot image and we can flash that onto the uh, phone so there it goes went onto the phone just fine then we can do the same for uh, system dot image and we'll go back here and change this boot to system as well or of course what we could do is just change directory and go to the out target product discovery directory and then we would just say flash what we have in here uh, instead of having to type that whole command every time uh, or to go back through it every time to change everything so we'll give this a second to flash to the device The system partition is the biggest part, so it takes the longest. The user data that it was talking about, <clears throat> one of the biggest problems I see when people are building custom ROMs is uh, that their user data usually um, on their phone currently is encrypted. And so often you'll run into a problem when you uh, try to um, boot a new ROM, if you didn't format that user data, you'll actually get a boot loop where it starts to load and it hangs up. Or it, it either will boot loop or it'll just hang at the icon and it'll hang indefinitely and it can't continue. And that's, uh, that's a pretty common problem that I see. So definitely something to be aware of. The user data, it's saying you don't have to flash this every time. It actually doesn't really have anything in it. Uh, pretty much just um, makes sure that you formatted or made empty the user data partition. All right, so we did boot, system, user data, and vendor, right? And that's what we have in here, boot, system user data and vendor so now if we rebooted this phone it actually probably wouldn't work right even though the next step in the instructions say that you should just reboot your phone and now you'll be running AOSP 10 see now now when you disconnect your device from the computer and start it it will be running AOSP well we gotta look at this next step which is to flash vendor image to your device because if you don't flash your vendor image to your device that's for the current stuff you're trying to run it's not going to work properly these are the uh, binary large objects that they couldn't open source uh, that you just download as a um, OEM uh, image so you see that we're going to fast boot flash OEM and then whatever the name of the binaries is so we go to this list of devices and resources which by the way I do recommend that they fix that to say you know make sure you flash your vendor image first before you restart because otherwise you would just be stuck so supported devices and we're going to look for the XA2 Ultra and here we see we have the XA2 Ultra. So we're going to download the software binaries. And we're looking for Nile. Now you say, well, your device was a discovery. Well, it is, but the Nile is the group 
that includes the Discovery, the Pioneer, uh, and the Voyager. So we need the Nile. We'll download that. And it tells us to check some for it, and we say download now. And it's uh, roughly 80.4 uh, megabytes. Of course, it's going to ask us to agree to this EULA. And once again, I apologize for this X11 VNC connection I've got here. Is It's a little bit slow and kind of laggy. I'm going to see if I can do some, maybe some RDP or something to clean that up. But okay, so now we're going to, we've accepted that EULA. Now it's going to allow us to download it, and we can save that file. We say OK. And so I don't bore you guys with my very slow internet. I'm going to go ahead and pause this here, and I'll pick this back up uh, when I get this downloaded. All right, so now we see we have the uh, full file downloaded here. And uh, I'm just going to go ahead and open in Terminal here, where we are in my Downloads folder. And, of course, it tells you the instructions right here. Uh, but you need to unzip it, right? which means you need to have the unzip utility as well. <clears throat> so we type unzip and then we type the name of this folder or this zip file. We can just start with SW, hit tab. It'll fill in the rest for us there. So it's inflating it and then it's done and now we see that we have the original zip folder and then we have the image that we're going to need so what we have to do according to this instructions fast boot flash to the OEM partition whatever this image was okay so we fast boot flash OEM image. All right. And so now we can actually uh, finish this process. So again, it's a little bit misleading, I feel, um, in the instructions because it said in step six that now you can disconnect your device from the computer and start it and it will be running AOSP. But if you don't have the very latest uh, of this OEM uh, binary large objects, you're not going to be able to get it to work properly, if at all. So I do want to make that very clear in this video. You need to finish with step seven to make sure you have the latest uh, binaries on your phone to be able to run it. So, and then it has a note, release version should be equivalent to the latest downloaded image version and platform should match your device. So, whatever you downloaded last and whatever the name of your platform was. Uh, so, overall, I think the instructions are really, really great. I am a little confused by that step six and step seven seems to be a tack on at the end, but step seven needs to be done before you can finish uh, that last statement of step six. So hopefully this was uh, informative and uh, will help you when you get started working on uh, the Sony Open Devices projects. I really recommend it. Uh, they do really great work. Um, I've been very impressed with uh, with the support and uh, availability of material and the uh, the help in their Telegram channels and. Uh, and just even the community that's been built around it, the people that work on it are very, very intelligent and helpful people, and uh, and I've really been grateful to them. So now everything's flashed to the phone, and we would just simply uh, fast boot reboot. 
And uh, unfortunately, I don't have a way to share that screen on here at the moment. And uh, let me check and see if there's some way I can add that to here. Okay, so I brought up the phone using uh, uh, ADB control jar, so that way you can see it uh, here on the uh, on the display. So it's a little bit sluggish using ADB control, but it's a really nifty program if you haven't used it before. I've used it in the past, and I highly recommend it. So um, here we can see uh, the AOSP 10 with the Sony Open Device Project. Um, we see. Uh, uh, if we go to our settings here, we'll be able to see that this is what we just built. Notice it's very minimal. Obviously, for AOSP uh, 10, that's pretty normal. You can see the ADB control is acknowledging every swipe or click that I do. Um, if we go to our About Phone, um, I can also just touch the screen itself, you know, to control it, obviously and move things there. But we see uh, Android version is 10. So, um, very great. And we see that uh, um, that I started this build just a few days ago here, uh, but completed it um, in the meantime. It's actually been sitting here done waiting for me to return from being sick. So, uh, but we do see the new kernel 4.14 being used there, which this phone normally uses the 4.4 .4 kernel, and so using the uh, SODP, uh, you can get either the 4.9 or the 4.14 kernel, which is pretty nice to be able to go ahead and get that newer kernel version available uh, to you for your phone. So another big plus for the Sony Open Device Project. But uh, I hope I hope this was uh, helpful for you if you're looking into the Sony Open Device projects. I highly recommend it. Uh, if you're looking to get a new phone, I'd recommend getting one on the Sony Open Device projects uh, because you're going to find a wealth of support um, for building custom ROMs, which is really, really nice to have, um, especially if you're just getting started in custom ROM building. But even if you've been doing it for a while, like myself, it's just refreshing to find. So... Hopefully you found that interesting, and I appreciate you taking the time to watch the videos, and I uh, look forward to seeing you guys later.